can you briefly introduce yourself? I'm Safa Fanayan from Hyderabad. I work with Vasan, which is Watershed Support Services and Activities Network. We work on natural resources, water sanitation and hygiene, and watershed services. And what is the reason you are here today at UNESCO IG? I gave a presentation on how capacity building at UNESCO IG or at the symposium. At UNESCO IG and at the symposium? I just finished, I just graduated from UNESCO IG. I did my master's in water resource management. And at the symposium I am doing I just gave a presentation on how capacity building is linked to transparency, accountability and participation based on uh, the work that we had done in Hyderabad to, from 2008 to 2012 on how water sanitation and hygiene, the cost of water sanitation and hygiene and how they're influenced by the level of transparency, accountability and participation that is present within the villages. And what are the three main points uh, that you would want to highlight? That first of all there's hardly any capacity building happening in most of the villages. Seventy percent said, said of the hundred and seven villages that we went and took the data from, seventy percent of them said that there is no capacity building happening. They don't even remember attending a training program. But then in the play in certain villages that there have been good wash services and over there, it's not because that there have been extensive capacity building in the formal sense, but they have had, they have institutional village assemblies, which are sort of an institutional space where they can discuss, where they get information, where they share knowledge. These informal spaces of capacity building in, in places, in villages where these are strong, the level of services is also higher. So at this small level of informal capacity building, there's so much of the outputs that you see from them are so high. So if there is a dedicated effort to capacity building within the villages, then I think the output would be much higher. One, one of the results from the expert workshop that happened uh, yesterday and the day before also here at UNESCO Aichi, um, one of the outcomes was also that education and learning specifically doesn't always happen in the classroom. For Hyderabad, do you think that is also very much the case? Yes. I mean, most of what you, in, in Andhra Pradesh, in India, most of education is centered towards engineering. And so the solutions also that you see that come up from the people who have graduated from these courses are all engineering solutions. Even initially when we did this research in Andhra Pradesh, when we wanted to do, most of the, even the government officials were like, why do you want to do this research? Why don't you just build more infrastructure? Why don't you make like a few model villages that can be replicated in other places? They wanted set uh, technical solutions rather than uh, solutions which build on the experiences of the village and, ex and develop the capacity of the people to take care of their own resources. What do you think is needed to change that? I think that uh, there's much more level of awareness on people's capacity to develop and even though capacity building has been spoken about a lot, in reality it doesn't happen in most of the villages. And also there are excuses that, okay, people are um, illiterate, majority, about 70% of the population is illiterate. So it's, uh, and so capacity building happens from top down, so they have the certain ideological way of where capacity building should happen. They're like someone comes, teaches them, and then goes away. But it has to be, I think the way capacity building happens in such instances has to be changed. It has to be more a top, uh, bottom-up approach where people, it's a constant engaging process rather than a one time come, I give you a lecture and then go away and never see you again. So finally, what is your personal commitment to drive also some change forward? My personal commitment is to tell others what's happening and then so that increase the awareness that this top down level of um, this top down level of education and assessment that happens and this this technical hierarchy is doesn't always work i mean people talk there is a lot of talk about how it has to be bottom up but with statistics and with hard data 
they can actually show that it's not working this way and it has to go the other way around. Thank you very much.